Hello everyone and welcome in Stockholm for the first episode of this season's ESC Daily Show. And I'll be joined today by Jonas Glatnikov and you and Spence. You and Spence from uh, ESC Insight and you from ESC Nation, that is right? That's correct. But we all know you as a composer. Yep. How do you feel about being here despite not having a, an actual song in the contest. Are you, are you sad Oh, that, that? Ni- nice yeah. <laughs> way to yes. set the tone. That's I know, yeah. yeah. It's, it's, how, to it's, how, it's how we do it, I'm sorry. <laughs> I tried my best to have a song, but no. Uh, it's, it's nice to be able to be here when Eurovision is in my hometown and uh, to give it, get the chance to be here from a different perspective than being behind the stage as a songwriter, as I've done before. So it's, it's, it's really interesting to see things from the press point of view. Right, and Ewan, how have your uh, first two, one and a half, how should we say, days here in Stockholm been? How do you like the, the press centre here, the environment? As always, these press centres have the teething troubles, so let's, let's gloss over them, but they happen every year. But really, SVT should be able to get Wi-Fi working and such like. I find it interesting that we have to pay for the apples this year. I'm struggling <laughs> to remember any previous Eurovision where we had to pay for the fruit. I mean, we're denied vitamin D, we're denied all the vital minerals that we need for a healthy lifestyle. And Sweden's very up on healthy lifestyles, yet the only thing that's available for free is fika. Not that I'm complaining that fika shouldn't be free. But, you know, you know, we, do, do you remember? We got all those laser engraved apples when we were in Germany. We oh got two yes. shopping trolleys every Woman's single coming, day coming by, full you know, of apples. Telling me, because I wasn't eating, I was just working and writing. He was like, you have to eat your yeah, apples. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It was just like your mum there, making sure yeah, you yeah, ate exactly. healthily, you know, but... Here, no, here we're, here we're left to our it's own It's Sweden and, they're, and they're, they were going to tell us that we have to pay for everything here. All right, let's take a quick look at how this press center looks and how the first days here have been. Velkommen till Hovet. This is where we are sitting right now in the press center. Hovet is uh, the name of the press center, not Globen. This was an ice hockey arena next to Globen, all turned over into a press center right now, in which you can see the, the footage here, the volunteers, the press, and this is the press conference room. People listening to Sanja from Finland it was yesterday. She had her first uh, rehearsal and her meet and greet with the press, telling her about her great, 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 great grandmother at that press conference who was from India. This is Dawa Bob from the Netherlands. He had his first rehearsal also yesterday and um, he was one of the countries uh, that, that did a good job. Some mixed opinions about Sergei Lazarev from Russia. We'll be discussing that later on uh, in the show, but this is him in front of his LED screen. And this is Gabriela from Czech Republic. Czech Republic as one of all the 18 countries, if I'm correct, uh, who we've seen now from the first semi-final. Any any thoughts from the, after seeing all the rehearsals? The Czech Republic is a song sung well. And the danger when you have to rely on a singer singing a song is that when you have a stage full of lighting effects with a huge amount of motion that the singer can get lost. We've seen that in a couple of instances this year in semi-final one. But Gabriella does not get lost in the stage. This is someone who has complete she stands. confidence. Yes, I know she stands and that's an easy pun. And we have a easy pun fee boxing here, which we will get you to put in one corner later. But she's, she has the command of the screen and it doesn't matter if there's a lot of space in the stage it's mm-hmm. what comes across in the screen it's a very very simple tricks that they're using the triangles on the floor on the projection floor it echoes the official video so those who are familiar with it will go i remember this one but at the same time all those people home will go oh, i wish it was a song why can we just have a song contest this is the one that's going to do it and the fact that it is such a crash of gears coming after russia that I think the contrast gonna, is huge. Yeah, I know. Personally, I think that what you actually want if you're doing a big solo ballad is you want a big solo ballad before you just to show off how good you are. But SVT believes that the way forward for entertainment is to have contrast at all the point. I disagree with that. But it can be made to work and it works really well here. How about you? Yeah, I think um, I agree with you that it's, it's uh, something that a lot of people who want real music will definitely go for. Uh, I also think a lot of people who aren't really even that much into music normally will still appreciate it. It's something both for the n- non-music interested and for the music experts. Uh, and she's such a confident singer, so there's not really much. She doesn't need to do much else than just literally stand there. First place so in the final ever for them? Yes or no? Yes. No. No, still no. No. I don't think there's enough. I think All right. I, because she's coming after the crash. She has uh, Russia before and she has Cyprus after. And mm. 
look, I, the Czech Republic starts effectively on zero points. Russia effectively starts on 75 new points. Um, Cyprus, or should we say it's Sweden too, because you have JSON kicking off in here. Um, it starts off, what, maybe about 55, 65? You need about 100 to qualify. The Czech Republic has a long way to go, uh, and I just don't think that her voice will stand out enough because of the contrast. If, if she was next to if she was next to Hera Bjork, for example, it would be clear how good a singer she is. But she's next to Cyprus howling at you. And it's just like, well, of course she's going to look good, but it doesn't make her look impressive. You worked, uh, yeah. You go ahead, go ahead. What were yeah, you going to say? I think of all the ballads, though, don't you think it's the one that uh, stands out the most? So I think it does. There's, there's bound to be at least one, one ballad going through, I think. Yes. So um, she... Of the ballads, I would say it's the most safe one in the final, but you never know. It's it has a lot. I could easily argue this will be 11th, but it has oh, a, yeah. a lot. Of, not every Eurovision country is equal. You know that yourself. Yeah. And the Czech Republic is less equal than others. If it gets through, it's going to be absolutely brilliant. I'll be cheering, and it'll be great to see them through. But it's really, really hard. And and it's I a tough semi-final. And it's a it's tough semi-final. And she's between two fast-moving songs. It's really easy to draw a comparison between Cyprus and Russia. It's not so... Who's singing before Russia? San Marino. San Marino. So you don't even have the contrast for Gabriela there either. Right. You mentioned Hera Björk. You worked uh, with yep. Hera Björk. Sorry for not having done my homework. Which are the countries this year that you tried for? That are, uh, are, are any of them also in semi-final one now? Uh, yeah. Um, Malta and Finland. Right, Basically, and um, how, do you, how, do you, how do you look, how do you look yeah. at those countries now that you now that you see them here, the, the actual winner? Um, well, of course, I, the Finnish song is one I've been hearing so much more than the other ones, uh -huh. uh, especially since basically that's the song that won in the national finals there. Uh, so it's hard to judge it at, compared to the other ones, whereas with Malta, there's the other thing around because that's not the song that won the Maltese finals. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. <laughs> I haven't heard that song, song as much. But I think um, I hope Finland will qualify. I'm not so sure it's it's uh, going to happen, but I hope so. And Malta, I think, should probably be quite safe in the final. But it's really hard to tell. <laughs> Did she make a good choice, Ewan, changing her song, I Ira Lasko? I th no, she didn't. Um, it means it's very hard for her to have the Maltese population behind her. It means it's very hard for her to have the fan community behind her. And even though the fan community makes up a very small percentage of the votes in the semi-final, they're the ones that seed the stories into social networks that are picked up by smaller publications then picked up by the mainstream media. I think the problem with, with Malta this year is actually a very simple one. There's not one person that has a singular, unique vision. You know, whoever is the, the new head of delegation from, che from the Czech Republic has a very clear idea of what he wants in Gabriella. You can see that everybody mm -hmm. is pulling in exactly the same direction. Malta, you, you're going to have Ira, who's a strong personality, Ira's management, uh, her record label. Um, her, I mean, she's signed for Warner Sweet now, so there's another record label too, involved. Too many there's influences. Too many cooks yeah. in there. Uh, and it shows in the performance, do doesn't something. it? It's and the performance has got so many ideas in it, yeah. and the Czech Republic has one idea. And you know which one works better? The Czech. Because they have just one. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So we had um, Malta with too many different ideas in the staging. One where there was a very clear idea in the staging was Armenia, and we went to their press conference to discuss it. Um, you know, it wasn't planned because, well, actually, it was in the beginning when, when we decided what kind of song uh, we should take. We said we don't want to put something Armenian in it because it has to be something Armenian. I think nobody wants to listen to something that you like force into a song. Um, the zurna part, it's an old Armenian instrument, came so naturally. And I think if you, if you put these elements in it on the right way, then everybody will like it, you know? I think it's, it's interesting to put a ethnic part in it. Like, I got a lot of people telling me, oh, you know, the instrumental part is so impressive. So I, so I think we did a right job. It was, it's not too much, it's really tasteful, so. Everything is well planned by Sasha, Sasha Jean-Baptiste sitting here. I'm so happy that she's, she's responsible for the staging. And um, the good thing is that Sasha, I think she totally sees me and uh, knows and just, she just got the whole picture and uh, she didn't think about it just today. <laughs>
she is everything well planned and um, I'm really really thankful I just to be honest I saw the show first the first time today but um, I'm really really thankful and happy because now I see okay everything makes sense everything comes together and yeah I'm, I'm really impressed by the whole visual act you've got and your outfit with the suit swimsuit and the cape you look very much like a superhero and you look quite powerful on stage how did all that come apart Thank you very much, but I have to tell I'm not opening up the, you know, all the secrets, but um, don't get so secure that this is really my final stage costume. So a song written already with the staging in mind, have you ever worked like that, uh, Jonas, with already writing it for the way it should look on a stage? Uh, no, actually not. It's usually something that comes later, so it's quite an interesting approach to... Uh, think of the staging first rather than the song because when I write songs I think more about how it sh should be well presented like more on the radio or I keep your vision in mind of course but more in the terms of that it should be possible to sing it live rather than staging is something I always left to someone else so it's interesting to hear that people are also You were never involved in the staging uh, ideas? I've been invo involved in decisions uh, but it's I mean I'm a songwriter, not a stage director, so I never try to pretend that I'm the right person to come up with the ideas. I just come with suggestions. I, I want to yeah. jump in here because Good Enough in the Finnish national final was so cinematic in the music video yeah. and so reflective of personality in, in the on in the on stage when you had with the, the basically two mirrors and two people standing. Yeah. Are they interpreting your song? Are they find did, did that bring something else out of the song? you didn't know was there did they find something else or was that sort of idea of duality and hiding in a relationship there already yeah, i think uh when i saw the music video uh i was really impressed because it, it did feel like they interpreted the song in a different way but brought out something that, that i hadn't noticed because the lyrics what are did they what did you what did they bring well out that you didn't notice they made it more i mean they sort of sort of brought out more of the sad emotion in the song uh Whereas the song is quite a hopeful song, and a lot of people were commenting that it sounded very cheesy even. And with the video, I thought they went in the other direction, which I really liked. Uh, with the stage performance, there were a lot of good ideas, but there were things we tried to, to make the stage directors change, but they couldn't really. So it wasn't exactly as we wanted it to be, but you can never have everything. You never wrote a sp song specifically for staging. In Armenia now they did. And does it work? The way does it look now? Did you like the Armenian rehearsal? I love the staging they have. Um, I think the first minute and the last minute is fantastic. I'm a bit worried about the bit in the middle. It just seems to sort of sag, sag a little bit there. It is that, everything do you mean start. that's the point where the holograms come in as well? No, or just the holograms come in about the two minute mark. So it's the bit before. So the you've bit had before that, that big yeah. opening and then you've got a, oh, we're going to do something here. Something. Oh, we can do something else now. Boom. That, that middle bit's quite saggy. But we always speak in the fan community of the phrase of, oh, that song's been written for Eurovision. Mm -hmm. Generally, songs are not written for Eurovision. Uh -huh. Generally, songs yeah. are written, as Jonas has there, they're written for emotion. They're written for, for an artist, maybe, yeah. or yes. for. Yeah. yeah, and they're written for Eurovision. But when you have a song that starts off, well, we've got an idea for staging in mind. Not only does that give you the hook into the emotion that you need as a songwriter to go, right, I know where I want this to go, but having that clarity, and it comes back to what we, we were discussing there with Malta, is you have somebody that can go in there and go, we're doing it like this. It's blue and red. Okay, there's the love wave in red of anger and emotion. There's the blue of calm, peace and tranquility. There's a combat on stage to do that. Now those emotions of, of, of basically tranquility fighting emotion are in the song and the song just does what it needs to do. But then when you come to the staging, you then have songs matching up. If you look at Malta, the problem is the visuals don't match the audio. You know, it'd be very simple. You know, if you have a sweeping bit of the song, you do sweeping camera angles. If you have a da ska 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 at the chorus of Walk on Water, you have those sharp Oscar Zia as camera angles. Mm -hmm. uh, to me, that seems obvious that you have two different bits of the song, you do two different styles of staging. But if you have so many people in and not somebody go like that, it doesn't happen. If you've written a song with staging in mind, you can then work with the lyrics, with the composition, and then you can then take the we're staging it as a point between blue and red and go forward from there. How about Russia? Because a lot of people have been saying that they wrote it to win the Eurovision Song Contest and that their idea from the beginning was to go to go full force right now. Now we've seen the whole concept, staging and everything with it. Do you think that fits? Um, I, th I think there's always a risk with a, a staging like that that it overshadows the song, mm -hmm. that people remember the staging more than the song. 
of course that could also bring in intellivotes but you want people to really remember the song first of all i would imagine so i don't know but i think s having seen what russia are doing there is the slight risk that it could go, go too much because like half of what they're doing could have been better but then again um, a lot of people like when people go crazy with staging so uh, it might work in their favor they're throwing everything at it you don't they? it's not honest uh, and I don't mean in that that sort of there's a brown envelope that's being passed through. The song, uh, the composition, the creation of it's for Eurovision, it's not honest. There's not, there's. N <sighs> when you look at somebody singing a song, mm -hmm. either you utterly believe that their heart has been broken, or they're reading from a script and they're going through the motions and they're waving out to the audience in the Friends Arena at the exact point that Christopher Bjorkman has told him to make eye contact with the audience so he gets the votes. That latter is not honest. Your song, I think, to win Eurovision needs to be honest. Russia is not an honest song. It is clinical, it is forced, and it is kitsch in sync. Right, right, right. That's Russia. Um, we've spoken to a country that explicitly stated they are not Russia and they don't have the money to throw everything and the kitchen sink at it. San Marino. Uh, I don't think that the EBU can really help financially the countries more than it, it is doing by giving them the, the same chances, basically, because if they, if you ask for a content, they can provide, even though you could not afford the content, for example, but they can provide some. Um, so I think that EBU is quite fair in all this. Of course, EBU is a balance of power, because of course Germany is more powerful than San Marino when it's up to talks at the table. This is not a secret. Um, that, but uh, after all, I mean, they are doing great because they are able to keep all countries of Europe under the same roof, which is a political struggle and which is also in terms of organization something very, very huge. And also for the smaller countries like us taking part. Not every country has the same chances and the same means of uh, winning Eurovision. Is that what you meant when you said Russia has a head start? Yes, but there's also the fact that Russia exports so much music out of Russia that it's a familiar sound to people at home. So they, they listen to something and they go, oh, that's nice, I understand that. For example, a lot of pop music to the east of the Danube is written in minor key. A lot of pop music to the west is written in major key. So when Western ears listen to minor key pop songs, they go, oh, I don't like that. <laughs> um, so obviously, you know, they, they're just voting it because they're best of friends and they're, they're getting the oil money or whatever. And it's not. It's because people in Ukraine, people in Belarus, people in, in to a certain extent, the, the, the Baltic countries are used to minor key pop songs. And on understand the radio that every music better. Yes. And to them, their ears go, this is a pop song. They hear something from the UK and they go, this, 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 this isn't a pop song. There's something wrong here because it's not what they're used to. Russia exports a huge amount of music. And the same way that the Swedish sound exports a lot of Swedish music out there. And that genre, that style, that tempo, that rhythm, those beats, you know, the idea of laying down, you, you know, where you lay the drums down, what sort of click tracks you use and go on. These all build up the sort of underlying fabric of the song. Uh, and it's that fabric which feels familiar to people. So when you have your cultural voting, your diaspora voting, it's because the songs that you're hearing are cut from the same cloth as what you're used to hearing on your charts in your country. So Russia has that huge sense. San Marino doesn't export a huge amount of music. Even Obviously. if it did, it's not using that music at Eurovision. So it has to bring in something else. So what we have here is we have a Turkish artist um, and Turkish huge minor key. Exp exponents, uh, an artist here who's done well in Germany uh, with, a, with a French team behind it um, and then so, so you, you have this sort of muddled sound straight off the bat and then you have this whole let's switch from the honest version of the song which is this, this mournful Leonard Cohen, Victor Laszlo key into lost love uh, and you turn it into effectively a cheap rip off of Abba's gimme 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 a man after midnight um, curious fact, that's actually the video. Uh, mm -hmm. when, when they came up, to yeah, do, I know it's the, when, when they came up to refilm the video, they couldn't do it, so they just took his Christmas special from a couple of years ago, and he's singing from an Abba song. Serhat, Serhat, Serhat you know the dancing when, with when, the stars. They, they, yeah, yeah. they dark out his mouth. You can't really tell. It's yeah, you can't the, tell yeah, that he's actually doing Beyond and Benny. <laughs> 
what should these kind of countries? Okay, so now we have said hot. What, uh, what should these kind of countries do on the longer term? If if San Marino still says, well, despite the fact that we're not Russia, but we want to win Eurovision. Yeah. What should they do? Bring bring you in? No. <laughs> <laughs> oh no no! Don't bring me in. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, clearly Monaco won Eurovision once, and they're mm -hmm. e even smaller than San Marino, so it's possible. But they probably, I mean. At some point, they they obviously will run out of San Marini's singers anyway. So I think that was five years ago. Yeah. <laughs> so so I imagine if they're staying, they'll probably keep doing what they do. But it would be nice to see them do something that has a slight more connection to the country, rather than just getting someone who's completely disconnected to the country. Every song gets three minutes on stage. Okay. Mm -hmm. This isn't like football where. You, you know, you get different times and, and you have different stadiums. Everybody gets three minutes on stage. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of contributing factors. You know, for example, once you selected a song at a national final, for example, in Malta, there's not a huge amount of production done on those songs. But once you got the song, you get the money in. So, for example, take um, um, Skopje Fest two years ago uh, and Macedonia selected their song. And there was something like a 10,000 euro prize or something. That money is expected to be used to go and remix the song to bring it up to the level. Swedish production, of course, can manage that for 28 songs out of Melody Festival, and so they're all already at that level of production. So yes, there is an inequality. But you know what? Have you ever heard of Leicester City? <laughs> well, yeah, but... Exactly. Yeah. Oh, what Austria. Is the, what is Austria the strategy? did not spend a huge amount of money getting Conchita worse through, yet they still won. Arguably How did they do it? Lucky shot? Or is there a strategy to do for these countries to, to get to get their Conchita a, they sent or a, they their, their Leicester City? They sent a good song that was honest, that was heartfelt, that was genuine. They sat down, they thought about a single focused message, put it on screen, and for three minutes, the rest of Europe, the rest of the world went, I believe in that. And that goes from Conchita back to Satellite, but you know, it doesn't do etc. Unfortunately, uh, it goes you know to what's another year. It goes all the way back to those. You think of all your songs that won Eurovision. They all had a consistent message. They all had consistent presentation. They all felt genuine. None of these manufactured. We wrote a song to win Eurovision. Actually, okay, possibly Bucks Fizz. None of those. None of those cheated their way to the title. None of them relied on a huge amount of money to spend. Who is they just were artistically honest. Who is honest enough this year to win it? You go first. Um, oh, that's hard to say. Uh, obviously, I have to still see the rehearsal of France, mm -hmm. but that's clearly the one that, that people are predicting might be possible to beat Russia. But that's such a tricky song to stage, so uh, we remain to see what they do with that. But I would say, um, personally, I think Bulgaria is feels... It's a, it's a pop song that feels very now and current, but still it does have that honest thing. Yeah. Bulgaria has the same sort of issues as, as the Czech Republic is it's going to be very hard to get out the semi-final yeah but I think it's one of those songs that if it does get out it gets to it gets to really put the hammer down and go forward I, I think Netherlands yep. even though I'm, I'm not really sold on that staging Dowie Bob is I love the fact that he said there's 10 seconds in here and I have no idea what's <laughs> going to happen I'm just going to see it's like yeah, yeah, yeah. I love that because that's going to give him just that extra shot I think that the Netherlands song it's a genuine song. Avril Tross just went, here you go, Bob, do a song. Here you go, Bob, do a video. Here you go, oh, you've done a tattoo. Oh, <laughs> okay. It zems the ways the cookie crumbles, or however you do it in your crazy accent now, now. Um, <laughs> you know, the, the Netherlands is an honest song. Who else do we have on there? I think Spain is honest. Yeah, it's very, I, I, it's I, I, just I, I like the Netherlands, it's very, yeah. she made that song, and, and it's her own idea. Yeah. And, uh, came up with the concept herself yeah, I think and that can go both ways but sometimes you get broadcasters giving it the singer the um, all the control of choosing yeah. things Something and it goes really bad but this year we have a lot of those uh, entries where it's gone really well I, I think. think the one who's honest that we've not seen yet is Serbia yes right. there's just uh, it's a very classical just, song very good classic. composition it, it's going to depend on the look she comes out I've seen looks where she's very much more street casual and then a look more sort of 40s 50s Hollywood Eastern glamour yeah. star. Lots, of, lots of people like Serbia, but I've, n I've yet to find someone say potential winner. You potential winner? I want to see the staging first. If it, if it is a staging that we had at the national presentation, which was, you know, very, very sort of forties movie star. 
you know, sort of, sort of uh, almost like a Serbian Donna Reed. You know, I, I, I don't think that will that will have trouble. I think that will have trouble connecting. If she comes out with something a little bit more modern looking, um, and, and and it wouldn't take much. Just a really good dark trouser suit, um, white shirt on the top, just and, and just a little sort of toned back the, the lining, make it a little bit less harsh, more and accessible. Yeah, just just give it just a little bit of a way in. For the audience, the Serbian audience know know how to get in because that, it's that. There we go, boom! Right, we see this every night uh, on on the on TV. Europe doesn't have that, so she needs to make it easier for the European population to come in and vote for it. But the song itself is gorgeous. We'll yeah. be looking forward to that staging then. All right, so we've been picking enough on you tonight for uh, for now. So I'll give you the the last question. One uh, one we'll one more chance yeah. to to uh, to make everything right and tell yeah. us a little bit about what your plans are for. Uh, for, for future Eurovision. For the future. Yes. Well, Make uh, a bit of promo for yourself. People, <laughs> Eurovision. Come on, give Euro us a bit of thunder. Eurovision fans and the world, fan world, will definitely not get rid of my music anytime soon, I hope, because I love this country too much to give up uh, <laughs> to give up trying to write more songs. We can try. <laughs> All right. Well, before Ewan kills Jonas, we're going <laughs> to quit off the show and at least turn off all the all the cameras before that happens. Uh, thank you for watching the first episode of the ESC Daily Show and uh, see you later this week again. Bye-bye.